Ci troviamo al 27 congresso ICAP in compagnia del presidente ICAP, il professor Menegotto e l'ingegner Davids di Aurecon, lo studio di ingegneria che è di grandissime dimensioni, ha più di 7.500 dipendenti, che ha progettato anche eh, il Buri, il più grande edificio del mondo. Siamo qui dentro l'iLab e procediamo adesso a registrare una breve intervista con eh, i nostri due interlocutori. Eh, ok, please, professor Menegotto. <coughs> Uh, we have uh, with us uh, Dr. Andy Davids uh, because today we will award you of the honorary membership of uh, AIAPC. So I, I think that uh, in this uh, occasion uh, it's ICAP that is more honored than the honorary member because of uh, his fame. Dr. Davids is, uh, I think, the, the greater designer of high-rise structures in the moment in the world. Dr. Davis, it's important for you to receive uh, this uh, uh, award in Italy, uh, the, the country where the concrete uh, is was very... Originally invented. Invented. <laughs> uh, Professor, thank you for a very gracious introduction. Um, uh, I, it is a great honor and privilege to, um, to be recognized, I think, by your peers uh, in any endeavor any work or field that humans work in. Uh, it's one thing to be very, very good at what you do, but it's something else to be recognized for that by your peers around you, and it's a very humbling experience. But I, I do have to say that I feel slightly embarrassed because no person can achieve uh, anything worthwhile just on their own. Um, the great achievements that, that we as engineers can make to our society, the great contributions, are made with the teams that work with us. Uh, and it's really the power and strength uh, and intelligence of those teams that creates and achieves anything. So I'm very, very happy and, and privileged um, to be receiving this uh, award. But really, I do accept it only on behalf of all of those teams that have worked so hard to achieve that. Professor Menegotto, do you want to ask something to Mr. Davis? Yes, uh, first of all, I thank you again for being here. And uh, we are the Association of uh, concrete, uh, Structural Concrete of Italy. So we are interested mainly in concrete. Uh, what do you think about uh, the con structural concrete in the construction of high-rise buildings? Is it the uh, best material? Or... Um, reinforced concrete has been around for a long, long time. As we know, it was invented here, right, right here in Italy by the Romans, who used it very successfully. And we, we know several things about it. First of all, it's very durable. Uh, many of the, the items that the Romans created centuries ago are still in use today. So this is good. We know it's a very strong material. When we're designing and building these very tall buildings, and uh, some of them we've built recently, one that I was responsible for is uh, the tallest building in the world, 160 floors. This is built completely of cast in situ reinforced concrete. So it's, it's curious in a way that a material that was invented so, so long ago has, was chosen to be the prime material to build uh, mankind's greatest achievement with regard to tall buildings. Um, there are plenty of options we could have chosen. We could have chosen steel, we could have chosen carbon fibre and all these new materials, but none of them were as useful uh, and as cost effective as concrete. Professor, do you want to ask uh, something about uh, this uh, use? Uh... Maybe, maybe one thing. Do you think that uh, the practice of building high-rise buildings uh, involves the, the creation of new technologies, of new, of the application of new materials? It does. Um, if you look at the history of the great things that men have achieved, um, generally they big and large and complicated and new things have been achieved by just simply taking a series of building blocks that we know well 
and that are reliable and putting them together perhaps in a different way. So um, building the tallest building in the world, for example, I think we would be foolish to start to do that with a completely new material. We're better off to choose a material we know and understand better, like concrete. And yes, we can assemble it in a different way, we can use it in a different way, but the building blocks are known and they're reliable. So I think the message really is that um, when we're asked by a client to do something extraordinary, and we are asked quite a lot to, to do extraordinary things, our minds turn to reliability. We turn to people who are reliable, methods that are reliable, and materials. It's about reliability, actually. Um, and uh, reinforced concrete is just an old friend. Uh, it works, we know how it works, and it does a great job. So I, I guess that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we can always develop better concretes and new concretes. Um, for example, on the Burj Khalifa, we developed some quite high strength concrete. Um, mm. I think several years ago, concrete was really limited to sort of 50 MPA, that sort of mark. Now we happily use concrete of twice that strength, 100 MPA, which is around about half the strength of steel. Mm. Typically steel is 250 MPA. The concrete we're using now is, is approximately half that strength. So it's, it's becoming a serious competitor, I think, to steel in regard to compressive strength. What I would like to see is to develop um, a way to eliminate the reinforcing from concrete. Sure. I think if we could take the reinforcing cages out of it and have a material that had the flexibility of shape and form that concrete has, mm -hmm. but without the, the need for reinforcing cages, you know, a material, a concrete material that has tension and compression capa capacity, for me, that would be the perfect construction material. May I comment something in this point of view? With the naming, we are in advance because formerly we talked about reinforced concrete or pre-stressed concrete. Yes. Now we call it altogether structural concrete, yes. which can include unreinforced concrete. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, I guess we don't get too hung up about names. <laughs> uh, so, um, and there are other things that we can do to concrete. We can make it. Uh, uh, well, durability is not really an issue, that's fine, but I think to make it more fluid so that we can pump it to mm -hmm. higher heights is a useful thing. Um, to make it have a lower temperature that it gets to. I mean, when we pour a, a five metre thick piece of concrete for a raft, which we do quite often in the Middle East, you know, a typical 100 storey building would have a five metre thick raft underneath it of solid concrete. That concrete can get up to 70, 75 degrees Celsius. I mean, you can touch it and you can burn your fingers. It's that hot. Mm -hmm. um, and it can take two months to cool down, actually. It's so hot. I think if we can develop different sorts of concrete that have lower heats of hydration, that would certainly help us uh, in the, uh, the construction of these very, very large buildings. Uh, a last uh, question for me. Uh, for uh, 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 a reader, if a, a young engineer, Italian engineer, yes. want to work with uh, Aurecon, yes, what do you? What this? What path should they follow? Uh -huh. um, I can answer that very easily because I'll, I'll <laughs> allow me to answer with a true story um, on the Burj Khalifa. Uh, in the early days when we started to build the project. Uh, I got a call from the security guard at the security gate. It's a very secure facility, you can't get in. He said, uh, Dr. Davids, there's someone at the gate who says that uh, they want to see you. And I said, no, no, I'm, I'm not expecting anybody. It's, uh, and they said, no, you should come down. Uh, come down to the gate. So I drove down. Standing at the gate, was a young girl, she was in her 20s. Uh, she looked like a, uh, a backpacker with a backpack on her back. Sacapelista. Yeah, yeah, like a tourist, like a, yeah. a student traveler. And I said, 
you must be lost. And she said, no, I want the chief engineer for the Burj Khalifa. And I said, well, that's me. And she said, um, she said I'm an engineer uh, from Canada. I've just graduated. I've packed up everything. It's on my back. And I've come here because I want to work on the tallest building in the world. And she said, are you the chief engineer? I said, yes. She said, you're going to give me a job today. <laughs> And, and I said, am I? And she said, yes. So we spoke for a couple of minutes and I said, oh, I can see you're an engineer. She was wearing the, the ring that Canadian engineers all ring, all wear, from uh, metal melted down from a bridge that collapsed years ago. The, all the Canadian engineers were. I said, I can see you're an engineer. I said, OK, you're hired. She said, really? Don't you want to, to check anything? I said, I can check everything now. I can see you're an engineer. You've obviously got a, a lot of enthusiasm. This wins for me. Jump in the car, let's go. So um, that's a true story. And uh, she was one of our engineers uh, for years on the Burj Khalifa project. So I think just have the courage of uh, following your convictions um, and be brave to go and do something like she did. And uh, I'm sure there's a place for you. And knocking on your door. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> it's you. It's a pleasure. <laughs>